Good morning, Sequoia Elementary students. Mrs. Woodson here coming to you from the elementary library where I am beyond excited to get to share a little library in your living room this morning. I don't know about you, but I've been noticing that spring has sprung outside. And if we had to pick a season to be stuck at home to do homeschooling, I'm very thankful that we have the season of spring to get to, to enjoy in our very backyard. You know, I've been seeing all over social media where teachers have been sending boys and girl, girls outside to do scavenger hunts in their backyard. And I've been cleaning up the debris in my backyard, too, just working. And I've been seeing some of the very things that I've seen posted. I, I Recently, I saw a tree frog. He was stuck right to my garden hose. He was stuck right to my garden hose. And I was watering some grass, and he never moved. He was stuck like super glue right to the end of that handle. A sign of spring. I'm thankful for that. Look, here's another thing I saw in my backyard when I was cleaning up. I was moving a wheelbarrow down to my burn pile. It was packed full of leaves and debris. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw a little dot of yellow floating through the sky. It was a monarch butterfly. Another sign of spring. Check this out. This guy was buzzing my head as I was sweeping out my garage with a broom. All kinds of winter leaves had blown in there. And I was sweeping it out, and this fat bumblebee was buzzing my head. And I was like, why is he buzzing my head? I'm not a flower. And then I noticed at the corner of my house, there was a lilac bush that had bloomed. And he didn't, he didn't want me. He wanted the tree. He was after that sweet-smelling flower. Now check this next guy out. He kind of freaks me out. I don't know about you, but I was using a rake. Thank goodness for springtime tools when you're cleaning up your yard, right? I was using a rake to uncover leaves over some flowers that were covered up, and there he was. Yes, two feet long. I'm not kidding. It was a garter snake, and I can tell you this. I was beyond thankful to have that rake between me and him. I pulled back the leaves and he started coming at me and I had to jump back and then I used my tool to help him go the other way and he did. He went his way and I went mine. I can tell you that if you come across this, one of these guys in your backyard, don't pick it up. Don't try to put it in a jar. Keep the rake between you and him because you never know if he might be the kind that might make you sick if he bites you. But yes, it's, yeah, social distancing for for sure, between snake. The rake is a good tool for you to remember. You know, another tool that I'm beyond thankful for, let me get it. Can I reach over here and grab it? It's kind of over here to the side, and I might not should do this, but I'm going to. I hope that's okay. It's the umbrella. You know, there's a saying that goes like this. April showers bring May flowers. And we're thankful for that. Some of the flowers are already coming up, but I'm thankful for the umbrella. But this is what I want to ask you this morning. When you open up your umbrella, I know I'm thankful that when I push the button, it comes open. And I'm really glad that it works to keep the rain off my head. But have you ever thought about how it works? What makes it do what it does? You know, when you come in and ask me a question in the library, what do I tell you? I say, let's look it up. Let's go over to the nonfiction and see if we can find a book or if we can look it up online to find, find out how it works. I'd never thought about how the little umbrella works before. And so I thought I would look it up. You know, nonfiction books are written for the purpose to inform us. The author doesn't write the book to entertain us. They write them and they chalk them full of diagrams, captions, bold words. They even give us a mini dictionary in the back called a glossary. There's an index that helps us find things inside it. And so what I did to find out about this umbrella was I looked through some nonfiction books, just like I tell you to do when you come in to have a question about something that you really want to know about. And I pulled out a diagram of an umbrella for us. And believe it or not, on this diagram are all of the words for the parts of this umbrella and how it works. Pull it for you. Better? Uh -huh. Nonfiction written to inform. And this is just one example of a nonfiction text feature. 
character because that's what the author does. When you pick up a nonfiction book, you don't have to read the whole thing to learn something new. You can pick it up and read anywhere in that book. And the author does that so you can take a nugget of knowledge into your brain and keep it with you. The handle is here. Let's take a look at this. Here's each one of the um, vocabulary words with an arrow pointing to the part of the umbrella, the handle. Here's the shaft of the umbrella. Here's the bottom spring. Here's the top spring. This little thing here is called the runner. Let's take a look inside this one because this is maybe a little bit hard to see and I really kind of want to show you how this thing works because you can't see it move in the diagram and I want to show you move in the di in the uh, with the umbrella. So let me find my button here. Okay. So when it opens up, this part's the handle. This is the shaft, the bottom spring, and this black thing is called the runner. Fun name. It's called the runner. Notice what the runner is doing. As it goes up, attached to it are these little wires that look like bicycle spokes. Do you see the little bicycle spokes? I hope you can see it. Those are called spreaders. The spreader is attached to the top of the runner. Then it connects to each one of these long metal things called ribs. Like we have ribs that hold us up. The ribs of the umbrella hold the canopy in place. These are called ribs. So as the runner goes down, the spreaders fold in and it pulls the ribs in and the umbrella comes down. When you let the spring out and you push it up, it comes up and clicks past that top spring. Here it clicks and it stays in place and the spreaders work together with the ribs to hold it. This is, this is something I didn't know and I do so. Here's what I didn't know. I didn't know that each one of these little triangle shapes of fabric is called a gore. Each one is called a gore. If you're a seamstress, you probably knew that. Each one's a gore. And when the seamstress takes a sewing machine and they sew the fabric together, before they put it on, they sew each triangle shape together. And when they have all the triangle shapes together, sew together, they place it over the top. That makes the canopy for the umbrella that keeps us dry. Underneath, they go back inside and there's a little thread that they sew onto the rib to hold it into place. So when you pop your umbrella up, the canopy doesn't fly down the street. I love how the umbrella keeps us dry. You know, there's another kind of umbrella I wanted to show you. It's called the parasol. I had a friend let me borrow this one. It's a little different because to be an umbrella, the fabric has to be waterproof, okay? A parasol has the same concept. It has the same concept. It has the handle, it has the shaft, and here's the runner inside. Is, look how pretty that is. Wow, isn't that fun? Listen for it. It should click into place. There it goes. It's on that top spring, and it holds open the canopy. Look at the ribs on this one. Isn't that beautiful? This is not an umbrella. It's a parasol because if I hold this up in the rain, I'm going to get wet. I have to have waterproof, but this is used to keep me out of the sun. One more umbrella, and then I have a fiction story to talk about that's way different than nonfiction, and you're going to love it. One more umbrella. My friend Paisley let me borrow this little umbrella here. Same concept because you can have so many different designs. They're so beautiful. Umbrellas can be. Look at this fun little umbrella. The handle is pink. Here are the end caps. Here comes the runner. The runner isn't black on this one. It's a white plastic runner. And when I, I slide it open, ready for this. This is so cute. We have a unicorn. Don't you love that? This little horn in his ears. How fun. Let's take a look at a fiction story today. Let's take a look at a fiction story I have for you today about Harry, because Harry has an umbrella problem. The problem Harry has, I think you're going to be surprised at how his family helps him solve this problem. Let's find out. Harry by the Sea. It's by Jean Zion, and the pictures are by Margaret Bloy Graham. Jean Zion is the author. That means he's the man that wrote the words for the story. And the illustrator is the lady, and she's a lady in this case. She did the pictures. Let's find out 
one problem Harry has, and I think you're going to be surprised at how Harry's family helps him solve his problem. Here's the title page. Harry by the Sea by Jean Zion. Pictures by Margaret Bloy Graham. Harry was a white dog with black spots who liked everything about the seashore except the hot sun. One day, when the sun was hotter than ever, Harry looked for a shady place to sit. But when he tried to get under the family's beach umbrella, it was too crowded and the family made him leave. And when he crawled into the children's sand castle, the walls fell in and the children chased him away. And when he walked in the shade that a fat lady made, she became angry and made him stop following her. Get lost, she said. She was very annoyed. Poor Harry, he's so hot. The sun was very hot and Harry had walked a long way from the main beach. He was tired, so he sat down at the water's edge. All of a sudden, a big wave came from behind and crashed right on top of Harry. Whew, nice. When the wave rolled back, Harry was left floating in the water. He was completely covered with seaweed. He didn't look like a dog anymore. He he looked like something from the bottom of the sea. Suddenly, a lady saw him floating toward her. Help, help, she screeched. It's a sea monster. The lifeguard heard her and blew his whistle. Everybody out, he shouted. Everybody out. Poor Harry. He does look like a sea monster. Everyone ran out of the water and so did Harry. He was still covered with cold, wet seaweed. It made him feel cool and comfortable. And now he didn't mind the sun at all. He felt so good, he started running back to his family. On his way, some people saw him. It's a sea serpent, one of them screamed. It's a giant sandworm, screeched another. Harry had water in his ears. He could hardly hear them. He kept on running towards the main beach. He does look like he's float, floating. When he got there, Harry stopped and stared. His, instead of his family's umbrella, now there were hundreds of them and they were all striped, just like his family's. Harry couldn't tell one umbrella from another. Suddenly, two beach attendants saw him. Holy smoke, one of them gasped. What's that? It's a bushy-backed sea slug, exclaimed the other. They whispered for a moment, and then they ran. Oh, I can't find them. Harry went from umbrella to umbrella family. Everyone wore sun hats and sunglasses and everyone used suntan oil just like his family. Harry looked and sniffed, sniffed very hard but it was no use. He couldn't tell one family from another. Suddenly the two beach attendants came running back, back carrying a big trash basket. They ran towards Harry. Stand back, one of them said to the, to the crowd. We're going to catch it and take it to the aquarium said the other. Poor Harry's trying to find him. Then they tiptoed up behind Harry and raised the trash basket over his head. Harry didn't know the beach attendants were behind him. He was listening to something. He thought he heard someone calling his name. There it was again. Harry! 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 Now, Harry was sure. He didn't wait another second. 
just as the basket came down, he ran. He ran right out from under that basket. It happened so fast, the beach attendants just stood there with their mouths open. As he raced through the crowd, there he goes. As he raced through the crowd, people screamed. Some people ran, and some people did both. But Harry paid no attention. He kept on running across the beach. When he got to the hot dog stand, he stopped and barked happily. Behind the counter, the hot dog man was shouting. It was his voice that Harry had heard. But Harry had water in his ears and he couldn't hear very well. The man wasn't shouting, Harry, Harry, Harry. He was shouting, hurry, hurry, hurry. Get them while they're hot. Harry still thought the man was calling his name. He barked and jumped with joy. He jumped so much that suddenly all the seaweed fell off. When the crowd saw that Harry was a dog, they gasped. They could hardly believe their eyes. All at once, once Harry began to jump higher than ever. He goes. He, he saw the children. They were running towards him. Oh, Harry, they cried. We heard you bark. We've been looking all over for you. Harry was so happy. He did a little dance. The hot dog man was very grateful to Harry for bringing the crowd to his stand. He sold all the hot dogs he had. He gave Harry a free hamburger. The lady who had told Harry to get lost, she came along and she bought him a cold, cold drink. You're no sea monster, she said. You're just a lost hot dog. Everyone laughed except the two children. He's not lost, one of them said. He's Harry and he's ours. Then they hurried off to join the rest of the family. They're afraid somebody might want to take this cute little dog home with them. They don't want that to happen. The next time Harry's family went to the beach, they brought a new umbrella. Harry liked this one very much. It was white with black spots, and no matter how crowded the beach became, it was easy to find. But best of all, it was big, and when the sun got very hot, there was room underneath for them all. I love how Harry got his problem solved. Do you see what his family did for him? Do you notice what they did to the umbrella? It is bigger, isn't it? Notice how big it is? Do you notice what they did with the color? Do you see it? Black dots and a white background, just like the dog. Remember back in the story when he went to the beach to find his family? He couldn't find them because everyone's umbrella looked the same. You know, his family helped Harry solve his problem by making the umbrella be unique and look different. I love that they helped Harry and they made it big enough for where he can sit underneath it and find a cool place. Because see, in every fiction story that an author writes, the main character, let me find my little Harry puppet here, if I can find him. The main character, Harry, I'm coming back. The main character, Harry, they have a problem. And the character works to solve the problem. You know, Harry, in this story, I love what he does. When he sees his family, he doesn't run away from them, even though they were mean to him. He loves them, and he forgives them quickly, and he goes with them right away. I love that. You know, I, I learn a lesson from fiction, fiction stories, and I tell you guys this all the time. But even though it's a fiction story and the author wrote it to entertain us, not like the nonfiction book we talked about a minute ago, you can still learn a lesson. 
I'm going to work on that. When, when someone does something like shoes me away or maybe says something to me that isn't very nice, I'm going to try to be like Harry in this story. And I'm going to forgive them quickly and love them anyway. I love that little lesson Harry taught us. Can I show you guys three parts of the story? Because, you know, fiction is very different. Let me find my little props here. Fiction is very different than nonfiction because the author's purpose isn't to um, inform us. Fiction is written to entertain us. There's my little, my fun little, can you see that, Mr. Trujillo? The author isn't going to have the character do things out of order because he's going to introduce the character at the beginning of the story and then he's going to introduce a problem that the character is working to solve. The sequence of events that the story has to follow to the reader is going to make sense. So look at this story, whoops, and think back to what happened in the story because Harry worked to solve the problem. Do you remember what his problem was? Do you remember what his problem was? His problem was that he was hot, remember? I've been that hot before on the beach. I bet you have too, and maybe even recently, because it's been that hot outside. So if we were going to put this in the right order, and I have these little tags here, beginning, middle, and end. Which one of these would we stick the beginning one in? Was it when he got the new umbrella? Oh, here he is, because he's a sea monster. That wouldn't make sense, would it? No. Beginning. This one was hot. And, you know, they shoot him away, didn't they? They weren't nice. They didn't mean to be that way. They had worked hard on that castle. It's beautiful. But they did. That was at the beginning. So let's slide this one over, because... The character has to start here for a fiction story to make sense. There has to be a beginning. And then, what happened next? Did he get the umbrella? Or was it when he became the sea monster? That was a problem within the problem. He was just, just trying to cool off. And as he cooled off, he accidentally turned into a sea monster, and everybody in, on the beach was terrified of him. And the worst thing was, he had another problem. He couldn't hear him. Let me get that stuck in there. He couldn't hear him. Poor guy had water in his ears. So the beginning, middle, and then the best part is usually the end because you get to find out how that main character resolves, solves the problem that started at the very beginning. And I love it when there's a good ending. Sometimes the endings are happy in a fiction story. Sometimes they're sad. But this one, there's always a lesson to be learned, no matter what, no matter how thick that fiction book is. There's always a beginning, a middle, and an end. And there can be all kinds of details in between. And there can be all kinds of problems that happen to the main character as he's trying to solve that problem. You know, I hope you enjoyed this story today. I wanted to let you know that I, too, have started a Facebook group on um the internet. Uh, it's called Mrs. Uh, Sequo I think it's Sequoia Elementary Book Talks. I don't have a paper with me. I apologize for that. Um, next week I'll try to use the smart board. Uh, um, Sequoia Elementary Book Talks. You know, what we can do on that is send a two little minute video clip on the stories that you're reading right now. Tell us a little bit about the story and why you liked it. Tell us about uh, the character and Give us a little clip of selling that book to your friends and why they should read it too. If you'll leave it on there, other friends will be encouraged to read the books you're reading, or maybe they will be encouraged to share things about their books as well. That again is Sequoia Elementary Book Talks. That's all I have for you today. I hope you're reading something good right now. I hope you're looking online too. If you have the internet and you have access to that, there are all kinds of free fiction and nonfiction books and their resources that are posted um, on my Facebook page too every day that are free for you all to use during this stay at home learning time. So I hope that you're using those as well um, once you've exhausted that bookshelf at your house. I know sometimes when
things. When you watch your same bookshelf over and over again, you kind of feel like, oh, I don't have anything to read. When, when you really do, but you just get bored with them. So that online resource is a way that you can um, supplement the books that you have at home. Epic Books is another great resource too that has all kinds of fiction and nonfiction books both posted on there for you to um, read. Again, I hope you are enjoying your um, scavenger hunts in your yards. I hope you're enjoying your reading. And that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you for enjoying the story with me. I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye.